Act Two of the Tragedy of Macbeth by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One. Inverness, court within the castle. Enter Banquo and Fleance, bearing a torch before them. How goes the night, boy? The moon is down. I have not heard the clock. And she goes down at twelve. I take tis later, sir. Hold, take my sword. There's husbandry in heaven. Their candles are all out. Take thee that too. A heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers, restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. Enter Macbeth and a servant with a torch. Give me my sword. Who's there? A friend. What, sir, not yet at rest? The king's abed. He hath been in unusual pleasure, and sent forth great largesse to your offices. This diamond he greets your wife withal, by the name of most kind hostess, and shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, our will became the servant to defect, which else should free have wrought. All's well. I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you they have showed some truth. I think not of them. Yet when we can entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your kind displeasure. If you shall cleave to my consent when tis, it shall make honour for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it, but still keep my bosom franchised and allegiance clear, I shall be counselled. Good repose the while. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Exeunt Banquo and Fleance. Go bid thy mistress. When my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. Exit Servant. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain? I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalst me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing. It's the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now o'er the one half-world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtained sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel the wolf, whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm set earth, Hear not my steps, which way they walk, for fear thy very stones prate of my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whiles I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds, to cold breath gives. A bell rings. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell. That summons thee to heaven or to hell. Exit. Act two, scene two. The same. Enter Lady Macbeth. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Hark! Peace. It was the owl that shrieked. The fatal bellman, which gives the sternest good night. He is about it. The doors are open, 
and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their possets, that death and nature do contend about them, whether they live or die. Within. Who's there? What, ho? Alack, I am afraid they have awaked, and tis not done. The attempt, and not the deed, confounds us. Hark! I laid their daggers ready, he could not miss em. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done't. Enter Macbeth. My husband. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now. As I descended? I. Hark! Who lies in the second chamber? Donalbain. This is a sorry sight. Looking on his hands. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one did laugh in sleep, and one cried murder, that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers, and address them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and amen the other, as they had seen me with these hangmen's hands. Listening their fear, I could not say amen, when they did say God bless us. Consider it not so Deeply. But wherefore could not I pronounce Amen? I had most need of blessing, and Amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep, the innocent sleep, sleep that knits up the ravelled sleeve of care. The death of each day's life, sore labour's bath, balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. What do you mean? Still it cried, sleep no more, to all the house. Glamis hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cordor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Why, worthy thane, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain-sickly of things. Go, get some water, and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them, and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose, give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms withal, for it must seem their guilt. Exit. Knocking within. Whence is that knocking? How is't with me, when every noise appalls me? What hands are here? Ha! They pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No, this my hand will rather the multitudinous seas in incarnadine, making the green one red. Re-enter Lady Macbeth. My hands are of your colour. But I shame to wear a heart so white. Knocking within. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it then? Your constancy hath left you unattended. Knocking within. Hark! More knocking. Get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us, and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, to a best not know myself. Knocking within. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. Exeunt. Act 2, Scene 3. 
The same. Knocking within. Enter a porter. Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were porter of Hellgate, he should have all turning the key. Knocking within. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there of the name of Beelzebub? Here's a farmer that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Come in time. Have napkins and ooh about you. Here you'll switch for it. Knocking within. Knock, knock. Who's there in the other devil's name? Faith, he is an equivocator that could swear in both the scales against either scale, who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven. Oh, come in, equivocator. Knocking within. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Faith, he is an English tailor come hither for stealing out of a French hose. Come in, tailor. Here you may roast your goose. Knocking within. Knock, knock, never act quiet. What are you? But this place is too cold for hell. I'll devil porter it no further. I had thought to have let in some of all professions that go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Knocking within. Anon, anon. I pray you remember the porter. Opens the gate. Enter Macduff and Lennox. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed, that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cock. And drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Marry, sir, nose-painting, sleep, and urine. Lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but it takes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him, and it mars him. It sets him on, and it takes him off. It persuades him, and disheartens him. Makes him stand to, and not stand to. In conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep, and giving him the lie, leaves him. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. That it did, sir, at the very throat of me. But I requited him for his lie, and I think being too strong for him, Though he took up my leg some time, yet I made a shift to cast him. Is thy master stirring? Enter Macbeth. Our knocking has awaked him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy thane? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you. But yet tis one. The labour we delight in, physics pain. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. Exit. Goes the king hence today? He does. He did appoint so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And as they say, lamentings heard at the air. Strange screams of death and uh, prophesying with accents terrible of dire combustion and confused events new hatched to the woeful time. The obscure bird clamoured the live-long night. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. Tis a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. Re-enter Macduff. Oh, horror! 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 Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's What's the the matter? matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke ope the Lord's anointed temple, and stole thence the life of the building. What is, do you say, the life? Mean you his majesty? Approach the chamber, and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourselves. Exeunt Macbeth and Lennox. Awake, awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Banquo and Donald Bain! Malcolm, awake! Shake off this downy sleep, death's counterfeit, and look on death itself! Up, up, and see the great doom's image! Malcolm, Banquo, as from your graves rise up and walk like sprites to countenance this horror! 
Ring the bell! Bell rings. Enter Lady Macbeth. What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of the house? Speak, speak. Oh, gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Enter Banquo. Oh, Banquo, Banquo, our royal master's murdered. Woe, alas! What? In our house? Too cruel anywhere. Dear Duff, I prithee, contradict thyself, and say it is not so. Re-enter Macbeth and Lennox with Ross. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time, for from this instant there's nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys, renown and grace is dead, the wine of life is drawn, and the mere lees is left this vault to brag of. Enter Malcolm and Donalbane. What is amiss? You are, and do not note. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. Oh. By whom? Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were unbadged with blood. So were the daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. The expedition, my violent love, outrun the pause of reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gashed stabs looked like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There the murderers steeped in the colours of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love? and in that heart courage to make his love known. Help me hence, oh! Look to the lady. Aside to Donalbane. Why do we hold our tongues that most may claim this argument for ours? Aside to Malcolm. What should be spoken here, where our fate, hid in an auger hole may rush and seize us? Let's away, our tears are not yet brewed. Aside to Donalbane. Nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Look to the lady. Lady Macbeth is carried out. And when we have our naked frailties hid that suffer in exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand. And thence... Against the undivulged pretense I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I. So do I. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet it all together. Well, well contented. contented. Exeunt all but Malcolm and Donalbane. What will you do? Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. I'll to England. To Ireland, I. Our separated fortune shall keep us both the safer where we are. There's daggers and men's smiles, the near in blood, the near bloody. This murderous shaft that shot hath not yet lighted, and our safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore, to horse, and let us not be dainty of leave taken, but shift away. There's warrant in that theft which steals itself when there's no mercy left. Exeunt. Act two, scene four. Outside Macbeth's castle. Enter Ross and an old man. Three score and ten I can remember well, within the volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange, but this saw night hath trifled former knowings. Ah, good father, 
Thou seest the heavens, as troubled with man's act, threaten his bloody stage. By the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the travelling lamp. Is't night's predominance, or the day's shame? That darkness does the face of earth entomb, when living light should kiss it. Tis unnatural, even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon, towering in her pride of place, was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing most strange and certain, beauteous and swift, the minions of their race, turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, contending against obedience, as they would make war with mankind. Tis said they eat each other. They did so, to the amazement of mine eyes that looked upon't. Here comes the good Macduff. Enter Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why, see you not? Is't known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas, the day, what good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm and Donalbane, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Gainst nature still, thriftless ambition, that wilt raven up thine own life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to Schoon to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Cone Kill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors and guardian of their bones. Will you to Schoon? No, cousin, I'll to Fife. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu, lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, father. God's benison go with you, and with those that would make good of bad, and friends of foes. Exeunt. End of Act Two.